Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. One of the hardest things of learning another language is our timidity, being shy, not wanting to tell anyone that we are learning and perhaps not even wanting to admit to ourselves that it's possible to reach fluency in a second language. Those of us who come from small social circles or small family units want to keep some dignity and pride. We're afraid that other people, if they knew that we could speak a second language, would laugh at us, and we're kind of trapped in these cobwebs. These cobwebs are kind of like belief systems and ideas which existed a long time before we ever got there. It essentially means that we are held and bound by ideas which aren't ours. And these ideas stop us moving on. They stop us being the person that we would like to be. We carry with us mindsets from previous generations, from the world around us, and it's very easy to get caught up in those. And that is the topic for today's podcasts. Well, I say podcasts, but there is only one, so I guess I should say podcast. Right, let's get started then. So when we come to learn English, often we don't tell people. We don't want our colleagues to know, and we certainly don't want older people to know, people that we think are going to judge us. This isn't the case only with English. This is the case with everything. I remember when I was a little boy, I loved music and I wanted a piano. But my parents, in their wisdom, decided that, well, you couldn't make money with a piano. So what a waste. Why get the kid a piano if... uh, if you can't make money from it, isn't that only something which rich people should do? And then, of course, there were other views. I love to write poetry, and that really just wasn't understood. That was something which uh, older people did. It was something that people did who were rich, It's something which women did, but it wasn't something that a boy should do coming from an area full of industry. And, you know, all of these things for many years really held me back. Then the internet came, and within 10 years or so, everyone seemed to have an understanding that we could be who we wanted to be The possibilities were endless and there were more people practicing things that perhaps we thought in the past were not for us. When I finally became a teacher, uh, my parents were dead by that point, but it's safe to say that they wouldn't have approved of someone teaching online. And I'm beginning to wonder if they would have approved of anything, because they lived very narrow lives. I'm sure that you also have this problem when you're learning English. Unless you come from a family of language learners or a family of linguists, who celebrates English with you? Who celebrates your achievements? who celebrates your joy at learning new words. 
And I'm also wondering how many of you have ideas from your parents' generation that perhaps you're also carrying. That voice inside which says, you can't, you can't, you never will, so just give it up. Sometimes this voice can be all-pervading. And how do we get rid of it? How do we stop looking over our shoulder to become the people that we are supposed to be? It's very difficult, especially if you're faced with limiting ideas every day. Some of us, maybe in poor health, for example, and we don't really have a very open view that perhaps one day we might recover despite what the medical profession tell us. Other people see a list of vocabulary and grammar and there's a voice inside that says, this isn't for me, this isn't where I came from, this isn't who I am, so why am I pushing myself with these books? And yet through all of this, there seems to be some people who actually made it. If we think back to the Beatles, for example, they came from nowhere. They came from a very working class kind of background, but they suddenly became very famous and very rich. And I'm wondering why we would compare ourselves to them. Is it because they have money? Uh, we think that maybe we're better than they are uh, or worse than they are if we compare ourselves to them. You know, for those of us who come from communities where music isn't celebrated, you might think, oh, the Beatles, bad people. Yet for those of us maybe who uh, loved music, we saw the Beatles as something we wanted to achieve, something we wanted to be. Some people might see that as money. Some people might see that as being an icon of a particular epoch or generation. But in learning English, I'm wondering who it is that we want to be. And also those background voices which stop us getting there. Some people like to use positive affirmations in the morning time, they like to write out sentences. This day will be a good day. This day I will do something different. But doesn't this just drive up egotism at its best? For me personally, I'm finding as I get older, silence is really very important. Because when you're silent, and when you feel peaceful, your mind is open to other new ideas. Whereas if you fill your mind with things, the deepest parts of you, the parts that want to be expressed, can't be. It's a bit like flowers growing in a garden of weeds. These are just a few thoughts for when it comes to language learning. Firstly, about our own families and where they fit into the picture, because they are there. And whether you think you've managed to perhaps get a career better than theirs, they're still hovering in the background. Their thoughts and limiting beliefs are very much with you, whether you like it or not. On top of that, there's also peer pressure from your friends and how much are they holding you back? Not with their words, but as I mentioned earlier, even before you were born, you were weaved into this idea of opinions. And how do we break free from those to really become who we want to become? And lastly, how do we push 
our English forward beyond these limiting expectations? Is it by brute force in order to make money? Or is it somehow just slowly letting go and moving into some kind of new consciousness and new beliefs? Well, that's just some food for thought for today. I hope you've enjoyed this. Let's talk soon. See you. Bye.